does it really matter? When we're facing a challenge, no matter how big, great or small, does it matter how we approach it? Is it really that big of a deal? Does it really matter how we go about getting the victory? I mean, after all, God is on our side and He wants the best for us, right? Well, obviously it matters or we wouldn't have this episode. But it's also easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking, hey, I love the Lord and I've got a great relationship. We're doing great. I would never do that. And the reality is that tendency for us to work out the strategy on how to deal with any problem, that instinct is so ingrained in us that frankly, our first response is almost always to work it out work out our own strategy, work it out in our head. How do we approach this rather than immediately taking it to the Lord? And there's something really interesting here. So we're going to look at a guy named King Asa. And if you want to read this for yourself later, it's in 2 Chronicles chapters 14 to 16. And this was an amazing guy. He's made king and it says he did what was right and good. In fact, he went on and he did, he did the best he could to wipe out the idolatry. He wanted his people to serve God. In fact, he commanded them to seek the Lord and obey him. And he goes on and he acknowledges to the people that they have this land, they have the peace, they, they have all the blessings because it's all God. And in doing all of this, they prospered. Guy's doing great, right? Then there comes the challenge. And the beauty is he actually responds the right way. So what happens? So we see this vast Cushite army come against them. And I mean, it's overwhelming. And what does he do? So there's a lesson here for us. What does he do? He brings the army out to meet them, but he doesn't bring a plan. We have to show up. So often we want God to just deal with everything, but God calls us to participate, but it's in a proper order. So he brings the army out, they show up, but they don't have a plan. And what does he do? He actually goes to the Lord and he says, you are the one that helps the powerless against the mighty. And he goes on and says, we rely on you and we're here in your name. So we need you to give us the victory. Now, where it gets interesting is we actually don't see where that Asa does anything. We don't even see where God speaks, but what we do see is God struck the Cushites and they begin to flee. Now, Asa and the army pursue and they gain the victory. And in doing so, they got the plunder, they got the blessing. In fact, when you read the story, it just every time they turn around, they're getting more plunder. There was a massive blessing. And why? Here's what we see. We see it approached the right way. First, yes, we have to show up, but we seek God and His answer. We rely on Him. Then we follow or respond to whatever God is doing. And as we do that, then what happens? God is glorified and there is a blessing for us. So everything's great, right? In fact, it goes on. The prophet comes to Asa and says, reminds him that God is with you as long as you're with him. And if you seek him, you will find him. But if you turn from him or abandon him, he'll abandon you. And he goes on and says, be strong, don't be discouraged because there will be a reward for your work. Again, wow, what a great promise. Be strong, don't get discouraged. There's a reward coming for you. And what we see is a couple of things. Again, what a good guy. Man, he's a hero of the faith, right? In fact, he goes on and he calls the people together and commands them. And they make a sacrifice and a commitment to seek the Lord with all of their hearts. And he continues to wipe out the idolatry the best he can. In fact, he even removes his own grandmother from a position of authority because of her idolatry. Here's a guy whose heart was completely turned to the Lord. So he did so much right. But here's where the lesson is for you and I. So there came a day when, now this is Judah, where the king of Israel, just across the border, 
obviously is making plans to attack and he starts fortifying the cities, building a border so that the people of Judah can't escape. So obviously attack is in the works. Now, what's interesting in this is we don't see Asa go to the Lord at all, but what does he do? He falls back on our nature, which is to work out the solution for ourselves. In fact, we don't even see where he mobilized the army at this point. But what does he do? He takes all the gold and silver from the temple and from the palace, and he sends it to the king of Aram and asks him to break his treaty with Israel and put pressure on Israel so that they will withdraw. Now, Aram does do that. He takes the bribe, he breaks his treaty with Israel, and he attacks some of the Israel cities. And in doing so, the king of Israel leaves. They, they have peace. And Aram goes, or excuse me, Asa goes, and what does he do? He takes the army, they take all of the building materials away so that it can't be done again. But see, he trusted in his ingenuity. He trusted in the king of Aram and in the strategy rather than relying on the Lord. In fact, this is where it gets really good. So a different prophet comes to him and says, hold on, when the Cushites attacked with this vast army, you relied on the Lord, you trusted in him, and he gave you the great victory. But here... You relied, you trusted in the king of Aram, and in doing so, you allowed the army of the king of Aram to escape your hand. Now, hold on. The army of Aram escaped him? See, we don't know what God was going to do. If he had completely trusted God and gone to the Lord before facing this challenge, we don't know what he was going to do because clearly God wanted to deliver the army of Aram into Asa's hand and give him another victory. But he missed out. He had no idea because he worked the strategy out in his own strength. He missed out on the victory and whatever benefits and blessings that were going to come from that. He avoided a war. He got the peace he was looking for, but he missed out on the victory that God wanted to give him. But also, there were consequences that went with it. And so the prophet tells him that because he relied on Aram rather than the Lord, there would be war from now on. In other words, there would be struggles from now on. So before they prospered, they recognized that all the blessing they had, everything they had came from God. And in doing so, they prospered. Now, that didn't mean there wasn't the occasional challenge, but they prospered. Now, because he has worked it out in his ingenuity, now it's going to be a continual struggle. And sadly, unfortunately, he doesn't learn the lesson. And the end of the story, at the very end of chapter 16, what we see is he gets a disease in his feet. And it continues to get worse. It gets continually worse. And what does it say? And even in this, he didn't consult the Lord, only went to the doctors. And he eventually died of this. So why am I sharing this with you? It is our tendency, it's our first instinct, no matter the size of the challenge, whether it's something small or big, we have this tendency to not even think of the Lord until it's so big that we're desperate. And God wants us to come to Him in every situation, to rely on Him in every situation. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that we just throw it in God's hands and we do nothing. We should be prepared to respond to whatever He shows us to do, even if it's intimidating. And what happens? When we do that, then God is glorified and He gives us the victory. And as we saw, there, there is a blessing that goes along with it. But the blessing is purely the byproduct. Why? Because the whole thing is about us demonstrating to the Lord our absolute trust and confidence in Him. And you know what? As we saw with Israel and Aram, there are times when God wants to do something that we don't see in the challenge. We don't see how God is going to work. But He has something more He wants to accomplish if we will learn to rely on Him. Go to Him first and then follow His lead.